right there. About right there. Yes, right there. All right. How's everybody doing? Welcome back to my channel. I was gone for a little bit. I was actually sick for the past two weeks and uh, I had to cancel all my appointments uh, for the safety of everyone. Thankfully, I was able to recover fast and easy thanks to my fiance and my family that were taking care of me. And I'm back and I'm ready to get back into it. And this week, I'm gonna be doing a huge project. And you guessed it, it's a cover up for sure. I'm gonna be doing a huge project on my client's chest. My client has been getting laser for the past year, I believe so. Uh, once he gets here, we'll ask him a couple questions. But he, you can still see a few things on his chest, but it's not as dark as it was before. So uh, it's gonna be a really easy cover up. The concept that we're doing is Zeus and Poseidon. In the middle, we're gonna have a cathedral window with some filigree to finish off the chest plate. That way it has like this shape where it looks nice, it looks fashionable. So this project is gonna take two days. Today we're gonna focus on one side of uh, the chest and tomorrow we're gonna do the other half. Yeah, let's have fun today because I miss tattooing and I'm ready to get back into it. I'm excited, so let's get this day started. All right, so we're gonna start shaving the area nice and clean. It's cold, huh? A little bit, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so when did you get this tattoo? 2003. 2003? Yeah. So it's been almost 20 been years. Minute, yeah. Wow. What was the story behind it? How'd you get it? I was in jail. And then we had a lockdown. And mm -hmm. It was like three months long. Mm. So a lot of tattooing happened in that process. When you started getting a laser, how many sessions did you do? Um, about four on each side. Four sessions in each yeah. side? Okay. Seems like this one was the darkest part. Yeah, this one was a different person, so it was a lot lighter. Mm -hmm. mm. And then that was a different person. How was, how was the experience of getting laser? It was awful. Oof. It was, it was horrible, man. <laughs> <laughs> By far worse than any pain I've ever felt. Like Oof. broken bones, tattoos, cuts. So the way I'm going to be putting on the stencil is going to be a little bit different than how I usually apply the stencil. Usually I have like a huge um, paper and I just put it on, but this time I'm going to split it in within sections. First I'm going to put Poseidon, then I'm going to focus on the cathedral window, and then the filigree, that way I know everything's placed in the right spots. Um, so yeah, let's start with uh, Poseidon. <laughs> I'll be like, well, scrub it off. <laughs> what a great placement. Let's see. So, what happened here is that I didn't like how the filigree looked. It was going too low onto his stomach, so I decided I'm just going to re stencil the beer and start putting together like, it's like a puzzle. So I'm gonna put the other side first, then I'm gonna go with the cathedral window and then figure it out after that. So I see the beer, it's almost touching, the end of the beer here is almost touching the nipple. So I'm gonna go based off that and it's tilted. So I gotta make sure that both statues match and go for it, boom. Don't be scared to put on stencils. They're not permanent. <laughs> Boom, there you go. Uh, so now I'm gonna put on the, the uh, last stencil in the middle of the chest. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put the stencil stuff all across here or the outline of the both faces. That way the stencil doesn't get on, the, on both statues. So I'm gonna make sure that I'm careful. Careful. All right, here we go. Like I said, go in. Don't be scared. Look at that. God damn. That looks crazy. 
So I already put on all the stencils, both faces, the window, but the only thing I'm having trouble with is the filigree. So what I'm gonna be doing is I'm just gonna freehand it because uh, I feel like it's the best way for me to feel the freedom to kind of connect the beer, transitioning into the window and not make it like too much because the stencil that I had is a little too busy. So I definitely don't want the chest to just, you know, feel like I'm just adding stuff to the chest. So I'm just gonna make the filigree nice and simple, just enough to give it that frame around both pecs and give it a frame to the whole thing. So let's do it. Check the mic and make sure it sound right, boys. Perfect. And whatever areas that are not stencil here on the top, I'm gonna freehand it as I'm tattooing because it's not really that complicated. Well, it can be complicated if you don't study the image, but since I already have it memorized, it's really easy for me to complete the top of the head. That's why I always recommend for everybody to study your design one day in advance or even throughout the week, just kind of look at it and memorize a couple, play, uh, a couple things from the concept. That way when you're tattooing, if something comes up, you're just gonna be like, you know what? I already know what goes here, so I'm gonna freehand it. So you can make adjustments as you're tattooing, you can change things, you can take out because you already have it in your head. So in these areas, I'm just gonna go with the flow. And, and once I get to that part, I'm gonna be like, okay, this is what I need to do in this area to make it stand out more. Finally, we went at it for like 40 <laughs> minutes trying to put on this stencil, but I'm excited for this. This is gonna be insane. Let's go!
So we are now on the cheek uh, of Poseidon. So I'm basically gonna do a quick little explanation going more in depth about how I'm gonna execute it to kind of uh, give you guys an idea of how I would do it. So I'm gonna start with my medium gray and then dip it once on my solid black. I'm using my 27 curve Mac uh, with a voltage of a uh, 5.0 and you just gotta build it up. Don't rush it, just build it up. Good stretch. I like to kind of move around, change positions, because there's uh, specific positions where it allows me to pack in a lot easier. So I just move around until I feel comfortable. At this very moment, I'm just packing in. I'm not feathering, none of that. I'm gonna start feathering once I get closer to the top of the cheekbone. I'm gonna make sure that this area is dark enough, right here. Sharp, and then start fading it out. Now that I have my darkest parts already shaded in, now I'm gonna start feathering with my medium tone. I'm gonna go in here, just feathering, take your time. And before I move on, I'm gonna do a little bit of this area since it's a way lighter tone than this. So the way that I'm gonna be doing this part of the cheekbone, which is the lightest part, I'm using my lightest gray, and I'm gonna be feathering, but kind of packing at the same time. For example, here, I'm feathering, but I'm also putting a little bit of pressure. So I'm not, I'm not just kind of like, you know, doing this, but I'm packing in right there, you see that? Packing in, but fading out at the same time. And the reason why I'm doing that is because I want the center to be solid. So when it heals, you're gonna see those tones and they're not gonna change. They're not gonna get any lighter, they're not gonna get any darker, but they're just gonna stay as it looks right now. And if you're new to this channel, uh, I am not using um, a set of gray tones. This is me mixing my own inks and um, it is not the same formula every single time. It changes for every tattoo depending on the concept and how dark it is. So in this case, uh, I wanted to do a little bit lighter, maybe like, I think I'm using 20% black and 80% white. But if it was a high, uh, like a high contrast piece, then I would have uh, do a higher percentage of black. But it changes for every tattoo, so it's not a specific formula for every single tattoo. So as you can see, you can already tell like the tones. Boom. The good thing about using gray tones is that you're able to pack it in and 
whatever you see on skin, that's how it's gonna look when it's healed. And uh, compared to, you know, the drop system of diluting black, uh, there's artists who are amazing at predicting how a tone is gonna heal. But in this case, when it comes down to gray tones, what you see is what you get when, you, when it heals. So it takes practice, but just be careful on not going too dark or not knowing your tones because if, 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 you, go, if you go a little too dark, then don't expect it to get any lighter like uh, diluted black because it is not gonna go anywhere. And uh, if you guys wanna see some references of how my tattoos heal, go to my Instagram and I post a lot of heal tattoos that my clients send me and I like looking at my tattoos better when they're already healed. And there you go. I'm gonna keep repeating the same process over and over across the whole face. And uh, yeah, let's go. We just completed day one. It was insane. Uh, yeah, we went at it. We went at it for maybe eight hours today. He was he sat like a champ, to be honest. Uh, but how do you feel? Great. Yeah. yeah a little tired. <laughs> Cold as hell. <laughs> we had the shop like at 75 degrees today, shivering. Uh, what was the most painful part today? Right in here in the armpit. The armpit. Yeah, the armpit. Day two. Tomorrow, we're gonna go at it, the other half, and uh, complete the whole chest plate. I mean, he sat like a champ today, so tomorrow's gonna be cake. I think today, well, we, we wasted a lot of time on the stencil because he was a little complicated to apply, but tomorrow we're just gonna, he's gonna show up and we're just gonna go at it. Any final words? No, sir. See you tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> See you tomorrow. <laughs> La mama de 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 la mama la mama de 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 la mama I'm pretty sure everybody wants to know how he slept. How did you sleep last night? Very sporadic. <laughs> I need the definition of that word because I don't know what that means. <laughs> sticking to everything. Yeah? Yeah. The plasma, huh? Yeah. All over the place? Yeah. That's good now though. Was it burning throughout the night? No. No? Just the drive home. Oh. God, I can't imagine. Yeah, strap from the seatbelt. 
The what? The seatbelt strap was there. Oh. Let's just get to it. It's nothing else to explain but just to kill it, finish it. I'm glad you're back. I'm, I'm glad I didn't scare you away oh. last night. <laughs> well, you weren't really hurting either. I was torturing you, but not that bad. <laughs> Let's go! For the whole statue, I didn't really record as much because uh, we've been watching a lot of movies today. <laughs> uh, I ended up leaving the eye socket so I can go ahead and explain it a little bit more, go more in depth with that. Uh, yesterday, I explained how to do the cheek on the statue. Now I'm going to do the eye socket. So what I'm going to be doing is adding a whole bunch of contrast into this eye so I can match it to Poseidon on the other side. Because as you can see on the reference, there is not a lot of contrast. The eye looks pretty poofy. So here we go. I'm gonna start with my solid black. I'm running my machine at 5.0 with a 15 curve mag. Uh, I like to study uh, like the features and stuff like that, so I don't need a reference to uh, guide me through this eye socket. I'm pretty much just going based off uh, my own knowledge. Solid black. There you go. Now I'm gonna dip it once in my medium gray and start making this 
transition between my tones. Perfect. Now in all the areas that I left open, I'm going to go with my lightest tone, my lightest gray, and just pack it in. That way it's not just skin, because this is the darkest part of the, that face, so you got to make sure that you don't leave any skin open, or else it's going to look like it's not part of it. Like it's, it doesn't go with the, with the contrast and the highlights, and it's going to look a little out of place. I do feel like here is a little bit light, so I dipped it once in my solid black, and I'm just gonna go in lightly, one layer. There you go. And that's how I would do an eye socket. Ta-da! <laughs> Magic. <laughs> thank you, thank you. We ended up coming up with a really cool design and honestly I'm so proud of this one that I can't wait to post it, you know what I mean? What do you think? What, how do you feel, oh, the whole I experience? It. I love it, it was all nice. <laughs> how was it like as far as like getting tattooed like two days back to back? Today was a bit more sensitive. Mm -hmm. Yeah? I don't know if it's because of yesterday or... Yeah, I think it had a lot to do with uh, your body just really tired. Because I mean the first day is like cool, you know, we go at it yeah. and then uh, you follow energy but today you kind of like already drained from yesterday, you know, so. Today we went at it for nine hours. Nine hours, yeah. about nine hours of tattooing. Uh, and yesterday was eight. Yeah, I'd say eight. Oh, yeah. that's a lot of hours, man. That's a lot of hours. <laughs> I feel short next to him right now. Over here like, hey. <laughs> Over here like, what do you Step think? Down. I know. <laughs> but anyways, I think that's it. Any final words from you? No, thank you. Yeah, thank you. My pleasure. Life from Innovative Inc. <laughs>